I think Marius and Alejandro have already spoken of a lot of topics in, in this guideline. And I would like to make like a three-minute statement on Germany and would like to ask the Romanian colleagues what they think about it. Now, starting with something simple, um, the trailer, truck and trailer uh, decision is seen as an interference in the authority of the national uh, on, on uh, uh, tort law. Yeah, so the Germans are very, very negative if through the back door we are suddenly gr gripping into uh, tort law or any other local law. So here the directive also in the level of compensation bodily injury may have overreacted. So this is something which is uh, seen there. From the definition of use, the German side would like to see some more specific uh, definitions. One would be for loading and unloading of new cars. So if new cars are produced in a factory, they are put on, on a truck and then they are unloaded either at the dealer or at the seashore to be loaded on a, on a, on a ship, uh, that these periods are expressis verbis uh, seen as an exception because it seems uh, uh, impossible to maybe for only for one minute to have them licensed or registered. Uh, then, same like Alejandro, the insolvency should be better generated. Uh, one German said, somebody did it with a glass of, uh, uh, in Brussels, uh, had a bottle of red wine and was already late for a rendezvous, wrote, wrote it. So the language of the directive uh, suggestion being very, let's say, rudimentary and that it would need, and Alejandro gave some good examples here, a lot of effort that we really put these things into context also with who will at the end pay for it uh, and also with the ruling uh, situation. Here, by the way, Marius, uh, IOPA, uh, the German government says, no, IOPA, it is more the local regulator of the home country that needs to do more and that there should be punishments. Uh, if there is, there is an, a general law and we even have German um, uh, state employees being imprisoned for that, which is uh, that they delayed a bankruptcy. Uh, there's, a, there's a criminal act called delay of bankruptcy. So if a regulator doesn't intervene, let's say in Denmark, that that would be a criminal act of the concrete natural person who is not acting as a delay of bankruptcy. So I think this is something where, uh, let's say, we need to, to check if things like that come in. And last but not least, uh, the German government similar says, uh, German uh, similar say, it's so different with the, uh, uh, with the um, uh, loss record that we should keep that outside of a directive. And also due to the electronic means coming up, it may change so quickly that we should not fix it into such an instrument like an MID. That would be main aspects. Terrorism, by the way, very similar as well, and as already said. So, very similar situations as we have heard, and uh, our expectation is it will take at least another three years until we have it, and maybe we should use a single directive for the bankruptcy side and speed up on that one because it's really urgent. Now, maybe from, I don't know who wants to start, Sorin, Florin, uh, what do you think about the MID? So, um, hello to everyone. I feel like in a working group in uh, the Council of Bureau now, more or less, uh, uh, under friends discussing about uh, what the European Commission or Parliament has uh, brought uh, sur new surprises for us. Um, starting with the loss, uh, the definition of the use of the normal use of a car, um, I would like to say that uh, we in Romania, from this point of view, are pretty. Um, prepared for uh, this new definition. I think our law was already in this line. Um, we had this uh, distinction when it's uh, used as vehicle on road. Uh, we are covering also outside of roads, anywhere it's covered. There I need a certain uh, maybe uh, distinction and topic to discuss about what if it's a closed area like a, uh, an airport? It's used, it's normal use like a vehicle, but it's not open to public use. Yeah. There I, I would need a certain more specificity from the European uh, Parliament to, to tell us what to do in these areas. Uh, 
So similar like Germany, more specific yeah. for these exception and cases. And then uh, we, uh, because we have this uh, former experience in Romania, I always gave this example. We have some um, vehicles who are used as vehicle, but in the same tie, time they uh, uh, loan, uh, they, they um, are loan mowers, for example, on the road side. So in, in this example, it's used in the same time as a vehicle and as a yeah, um, utility vehicle. So now, depending on where, let's say, a person or a car would be, or a third party would be, and with what part of the vehicle it would be uh, injured, you would have to intervene according to this change or not. So from this point of view, I think there is still a need for specific clarification. Maybe this burden will be again picked up by the uh, working groups, uh, as usual, in the Council of Bureau or at the national level, but we will see. And then uh, from another point of view, not to take too much time of you, it seems to me that the uh, insolvency uh, um, new provisions brought in, in case of bankruptcy insolvencies is really uh, an important issue. Here I have to say again uh, that we have such a specific uh, guarantee fund, dedicated guarantee fund for insolvencies, which is not the case in each and every uh, country. I think that uh, this uh, was more or less picked up by the bureaus as a provision, as a yeah, obligation in these agreements we had. But it's not so clear if they have to intervene at a national level. So from this point of view, it seems to me a really good joke if you say as European Commission that it has no financial implications. It has strong financial implications to put such institutions in place and then to give them, yeah, to make them uh, work properly. And I will resume with this, and maybe in our discussions, if there's enough time, we will tackle also other mm -hmm. subjects uh, you have opened, or the lawmakers, the changing Going, you of want to laws. add something for, for Romania, from your view? Well, actually, uh, what we have seen from the beginning of the discussion is, that, is the fact that every time when we are talking about a piece of legislation there are let's say arguments pros and cons there are things that uh, we think that has to be done in a different way or has to be interpreted in in different way um, the fact is that we have let's say so many countries where at least in this case of mtpl currently we are facing uh, uh, significant differences between how um, the things are tackled in different countries. We have countries where, let's say, the liability is unlimited in case of, uh, of an event. We are having countries where there are limits. Um, we have countries where actually for bodily injuries we are having some tables to establish the, the claim. In most of the countries we do not have tables and each and every country has his own experience in, in handling uh, this. Um, it is for sure the time to, let's say, to have through this new directive uh, the possibility somehow to align the, the legislation in, in different countries and somehow to have, uh, to have a, similar, a similar approach in, uh, in, in how uh, the directive will be um, put in the, in, the, in, the local, in the local legislation. Um, from our point of view, we are having a, a law that is ruling the MTPL, which is quite, uh, which is quite new. Um, for sure, there will be needed some amendments to 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 this uh, to this law, but um, we have tried, at least in our law, to um, clarify and to clear out some, let's say, misunderstanding from from the past. And depending on the, let's say, the, the final version of the, of the new direct directives, we'll, we'll have to see how we'll have to also adapt our, uh, our local legislation. Okay. okay, so very, I would say, if you, if you take a bottom line, very similar approaches from almost everybody. And maybe we take two or three smaller examples, and which were also discussed by you already. Limits. 
uh, to take different limits for trucks. Now, fully agree, a car can also produce a significant loss. But if you look at the gigantic losses we had from the Barcelona fire in the campground, uh, Blanc, Blanc Tunnel, uh, the accident with trains, in Germany uh, a bridge had to be uh, 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 rebuilt for 112 million. Uh, so there is so many, so many accidents which are really from, ex from large trucks. So the reality is, if you look back to the last 30 years, it's trucks. Now, for bigger truck fleets, it's not a problem because the owner will buy uh, extra limits anyway because somebody would chase his, him. So if we would not buy the limits, and, he, and it is more than one million, he would be liable according to, to uh, tort law, at least in most countries, because it's not limited to the minimum, his liability. But if, if it's somebody who doesn't have the money, mm, so on that side, uh, there is, a, I think, a growing group that wants to have different limits for trucks again. Uh, I fully understand where is the border, what is a truck size, yeah? we, we come into a differentiation which may not be necessary. Or alternatively, say, let's increase in general the limits, because also as a former reinsurer, if I look what loss costs are really overall for this limit, it's not that much. Yeah? It's, it's maybe 1%, 2% extra, so it is not something that uh, could not be uh, taken care of. Now, question from you, to you. What do you think? Is, shouldn't it be maybe a higher limit? If I see what Spain has done, I mean, Spain was always notoriously low with the limits, and then say, okay, now we have 15 million, 50 million. Is, 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 would there be something that is doable in countries like yours? That's, uh, as you know, probably my, my opinion, because I expressed uh, during my, my presentation, in my opinion, I will repeat, the limits they are proposed are still too low. Uh, when we compare with the potential risk and we, the, the recent claims they happened in, uh, 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 in Europe, we see that they are much too low. And regarding um, your comment, it's not true that the owners of the enterprises uh, they, they, they possess the lorries, they buy extra cover. It's not true. In the majority cases, they want to pay as uh, low, uh, the premium as low as possible. And even this additional cover costs not so much. Exactly. They are not interested. And I, I think this is, um, this is quite common, uh, not only in my country, but I know that in several countries exactly uh, taste the same and we are trying to promote this but you, you know as long the fi uh, financial factor will be the most important we will be not uh, uh, not successful on the other hand there is also the question that we must find uh, the way to satisfy the victim as long there will be how to say any property as Mont Blanc tunnel of course, that the public sources could be used as well, but uh, in the case of uh, uh, of the, uh, the the badly injury, especially when they have accumulation of the of the victims, this is a real problem. Yes, but, uh, but I, I know, Marius. Uh, but let's say to go maybe the route of France and have yes. illimité yeah. is also something which I think the reinsurers will not take up as new limits at all. That was quite clearly said. They said, then you keep it in your own books. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it is quite clear that we have the exception of limité uh, because what it would mean from the capital, there would be a stress test that could be really uh, hurting the balance, balance sheets of, of, of especially reinsurers. Or let's say reinsurers would be confined to the top five reinsurers of the world right now and everybody else doesn't have enough capital to, to play reinsurance. So there has to be a limit. What do you think in Romania? So, I would like to, to pick up from where Marius left and then say the following. Uh, we are one Europe. Yeah, we should have one uh, single rule, one single regulation and so on. But then on the other hand, let us not forget uh, we as, as countries coming later into this uh, select club, yeah, Poland, Romania and so on. 
we had also an, an, uh, a postponing of, of the, the time limit yeah, to reach these uh, minimum requirements regarding the limits of liability. These, as we have them now, they were 1 million uh, for material damages, 5 million. We have postponed with five years this, this timeline. So now, let us not forget of these very difficult years in order to, to reach this. Let us look on the good uh, side, on, on the good example of Spain. They were on this level for many, many years, and then once the market was prepared on, on a local uh, basis, they said, okay, we have these minimum requirements on, on European level, but nobody holds us back to go above this uh, minimum requirement and go where we can afford this market. So from my point of view, if Europe is still open for newcomers, let us not go uh, directly at the yeah, very high limit, unaffordable limits, yeah, requirements to the new members or new uh, comers, yeah, and uh, let us keep things on, on a minimum affordable, decent level, and let also people do their homework, yeah, in their home countries, yeah, also regarding this uh, claims history statement, yeah, uh, it is less and less important to have it on a European level because we won't have uh, yeah, the liability of the driver. It will shift more to the liability of the vehicle, uh, the responsibility in general. So things should be seen also, also from this point of view, in, in my opinion. I fully agree. I think one, uh, we also have to make ourselves always aware even if we have a new country joining or you have a country, let's say, within the green card system like Russia with a limit of $5,000. Yeah. The moment they're in, uh, in different countries, the local limit applies where the accident happens. So more or less you cannot evade, let's say, the liability anyway. Uh, and then taking Latvian example I mentioned, we just have to watch out that not the domestic people are paying for the very few who are outside and produce outside losses. Yeah? In, in, in Latvia it was 50%. 50% was going to a handful of accidents. And this was something where let's say uh, for a politician it's hard to sell then uh, on the other side. So which means at least that could be a little bit higher. May I give you an input in now remembering the presentation of Haik from the Council of Bureau. We as country, uh, I, I wanted to say this uh, when I have the first opportunity and it seems the right moment. We as a country are a good example of exporting claims, yeah? Mm -hmm. But exporting also very much of, of, of what we need to pay for them. We generate, as one country from the 47, 48 now members in the system, yeah, we are approximately 2% of as number of countries. Yeah, we have, in time, at that, this moment, roughly 6 million cars insured in one day yeah, for MTPL, for compulsory MTPL. This means roughly, yeah, out of the 500 million, you can make it out. Yeah alone, but then we generate almost 40,000 foreign claims, green card claims, out of the roughly yeah, uh, 400 and something, 400,000. This means almost 10%. Let us round up. It's, it's enormous what the Romanian market has to pay as a burden for such uh, uh, external claims. It's, yeah. not a, it's not a burden. Of course, it's justified it's payments. You have but, to but find the means to rightfully yeah. uh, tackle this, to, to finance it, to, to have and, the means to, to... And what we always have to see, what Marius has stressed a couple of times, it is at the end of the day, the driver, also the domestic driver here in the village, yes. that pays also for this amount if it's the, not a different tariff for local, uh, local business. And allowed. to give you the, the whole picture now, we have only roughly 10,000 claims per year generated by uh, vehicles from the system in Romania, by, by foreign vehicles, mm -hmm. yeah. So one to four, this, uh, this balance, yeah. Okay, Ta or maybe yes, if you want to <coughs> comment. We, because we have to wrap up in about te 10 minutes, yep. really. Uh, this, then, yeah. Just, uh, I, would, I wanted to, to highlight something uh, regarding the, the Spanish experience. Uh, we are we have increased in one go our limits because uh, we felt that we were prepared uh, for doing so. Uh, injuries on the one hand, to uh, material damage, we have a so-called 
FICOS system, which means a, a very speed up uh, way of uh, handling claims between uh, insurance undertakings, and thirdly, uh, those agreements with the hospitals for uh, hospital care, uh, mm -hmm. which means that we have implemented the means needed to uh, to keep costs uh, in a rather uh, reasonable level. And secondly, uh, I would like to highlight also that normally uh, drivers buy not only compulsory uh, th third party liability insurance, they drive with a, a voluntary exceeding uh, that uh, minimum amount of cover so that normally vehicles uh, have a uh, unlimited uh, cover. This is not the same in the case of a guarantee fund. We pay compensation yeah. only up to the limits of the MID, of course. And the Spain is also a good example because some decades ago, Spain was like the same, oh, nobody buys it, etc. In Germany, by the way, 98% uh, of the vehicles have a higher than a mandatory limit really? and 99% of the cars. And it cost me to bring it up to 80 million. Uh, it cost me, I think, 7 euro extra. Uh, because, and this is also a big numbers game, you have to see that the risk premium for the large losses is not a lot because the frequency is so low. Uh, it is just the volatility of those that makes it expensive by reinsuring it. And so, but overall, that is interesting. But, so, in. yeah, so when we are talking about the limits, we have to take into consideration, as you said, the frequency of such, uh, of such events that will fall under those, uh, those limits. And maybe there is the possibility somehow to um, to, to gradualize or to have, let's say, different uh, coverages uh, per different risks. Because if we are talking about the terrorism, it's one thing. If we are talking, let's say, about a normal accident, uh, this would uh, imply a different level of, uh, of, uh, of limits. Uh, what I think is to be, let's say, taken into consideration is the fact that the increase of the limits just not to be perceived as a potential increase of the claims, uh, meaning um, to be somehow a driver saying that, okay, if I have a limit of uh, 10 million for moral claims, so I, I, mean, I, I mean, I can ask for 10 million instead of one as it was before. Uh, and in order to, let's say, to see what would be the needed level for these limits, we will also need to understand um, how are you going to, to reach. Because as you said, if you have 90% of the cases over these limits, for sure there will be a need for an increase. But if you have only one, maybe you can have, let's say, a different, uh, let's say, different uh, layer. And uh, in the end, those increase of limits, I would think that would affect more the reinsurance activity because the let's say the the level that is uh, is kept at at each and every uh, insurer i don't think that will will change too much so the let's say the pressure will be moved towards the reinsurance and the cost of reinsurance would would be would be different yeah and but i agree to one thing and i, I remember a polish case when i was still in the board of ergo hestia um, where a judge said the person is so heavily injured, he should get 100% of the accident <coughs> limit. Yeah? It was seen like an accident limit, and if somebody is totally injured, he should get 100%. So you're right, it is also a question of legal maturity, I would call it. Yeah? And here maybe countries like Romania have yet to come out of the youth in, in some areas. And, I, and I've seen it in Poland. Today, it's made, this would not be possible. A judge who would make such a ruling would no, be really... In those days, the limits were much lower than now. This, this still, was exceptional. But still, but yeah. still it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Because uh, coming back to what uh, our uh, colleague from, from Bar has presented uh, before talking about the um, initiative to have the list for the, for the moral claims, I mean, that list or that measure will work only for the accidents happened here in Romania. Uh, so once you're having 60% of the accidents outside Romania or 70% of the accidents outside Romania, such a measure will not, 
show the full results. Well, you, have to look at you, you have to look at each and every yeah. country yeah. separately. You have to look uh, at moreover, it uh, can be perceived by uh, the people like uh, something done against them, saying, okay, if the accident is, is in Romania, you are going to pay me this amount. However, uh, let's say if the victim is a uh, Spanish uh, person or German person, you are paying unlimited. And there are lots of, let's say, lots of discussions uh, and lots of opinions to be uh, aligned in order to have a, a good piece of rule. Yeah, but here I think this is, we see this very, very critical in Germany or other countries that through the back door, uh, trying to limit to, let's say, having a Europe-wide similar system of, 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 of uh, compensation, especially for bodily injury, tries to be introduced. Honestly, this has been tried now for 60, 70 years. Uh, I would say in the US, other states, they also tried it. It never worked. Uh, but we cannot solve it in the directive. I think it is an infringement of the local rights because there is very often compensation systems, very complex or compensation systems in there. But I agree, what is best is something like a Baremo system yes. to have a That's more exactly. fixed and more calculable model than we have in other countries. If we have countries where it's really arbitrary, uh, and we have countries uh, where it's hugely high and costs everybody a lot, like Italy, or countries like Germany where things depend very much also uh, on, on the personal situation of, of the victim. So, yes, but you wanted to comment as well? I wanted to bring some inputs, uh, maybe they are useful. Uh, I have, was telling that we have 40,000, roughly 40,000 claims happening abroad generated by the Romanian market. In the same time, we have a total of 350,000 claims on MTPL on year by year paid uh, by the market. So in order to have this, uh, this uh, in, in, uh, in the background, in order to say, how much they represent. Yeah, of course, the uh, claims happening abroad are a little bit more expensive than the internal ones as an average and so on. And then I wanted to go back because I wasn't clear if, uh, if you were mentioning uh, terrorism uh, as a reasoning why to keep the level of, uh, of um, uh, responsibility uh, pretty low. I, I would say that uh, for Romania, for the time being, it's not an issue. Uh, because terrorism is not covered by the MTPL, I feel, and I, I have to say it openly, I would feel it more like uh, the Spanish, if I understood it right, as the Spanish market uh, is doing it, it would be highly unfair to put this burden on the shoulders or in the pockets of the consumer which is using normally his vehicle yeah, because I don't have the means as insurance market or as insurance institutions to fight against uh, terrorism and so on. So this burden should not be put again on the shoulders of the normal consumers of compulsory MTPL. Like in, uh, in uh, the example of our Polish colleagues. They have their way, I respect their way, but I would say that our way should be rather the, the Spanish way not to put this burden on the shoulders of the MTPL consumer, of the normal, decent consumer who is using his car. Uh. And this is, this is, by the way, also the view of, of Germans and most. Uh, so Poland there is an exception. But there is one thing about this Berlin case. In Berlin case, the driver used the pure force of the, of the truck. Uh, so what was causing the damage was a pure force of the truck. In many cases, it was a parked truck where maybe the engine was used for an explosive, mm -hmm. but what was really the danger was the payload, which was consisting of a bomb instead of uh, some Amazon products. And so uh, this, is, this has nothing to do with the vehicle. It's only a storage for a bomb uh, or okay. concealment for a bomb. So I think the discussion here will lead to the terrorism probably being a taken out, but I don't know. I, uh, I, uh, we have this provision for many, many years uh, in, in Polish legislation. It was not introduced uh, recently just because of the terrorists. No, the main idea behind is the, the victim must be always protected. Uh, if we will not put it into the directive, this is not a problem for us, they must be any other system to compensate the victims because uh, 
For example, in Germany there is the possibility to compensate, and this is via the German Guarantee Fund, but this is not coming from MTPL law. It's a different one. Yes, but, but there must be any system. But does it have to be Europe-wide? Yes, this could be via the government, uh, on so on and so on. Uh, and uh, I agree with you, this is the, the, there are two aspects. To use the car as a weapon, as a drive, to drive, or to just uh, as a place uh, for the explosion. This is something different. And this accident, it was in Nice, this was exactly by use of the vehicle, yes? And this in Berlin, and this in Stockholm. And this, it was uh, fortunately uh, stop on place uh, in, in Vienna. So, uh, but we can have also another uh, 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 another use of the vehicle. Good. Uh, I have to look a little bit on, on the clock. Uh, I, I want to make, before I make one last round, because we have here in the directive a behavior of Germany, yeah. smack in the middle by uh, putting in some mandatory insurance. Uh, and the German response is, well, we have it today as well. If you take a light moped, uh, Mofa, yeah. today in some countries it has a license, it is also mandatory insurance, in some countries it doesn't, and so far. I didn't hear that this was a huge problem. Right? And so that also, let's say, against the critic, just as a, as a small comment. And so I would like to bring a last round, and maybe you do, if you have a very specific answer yet to do, and a basic consideration. What do you think about the directive? Will it come soon? Where is the most work? Just, let's say, three, four bullet points in talking. And maybe we start with, with Florin. Well, I, I mean, I would just try to summarize that from my point of view, uh, these new directives is uh, uh, required to be done. I mean, I mean, there is the need to have it and to have these updates because um, we need, let's say, to, to have some more clarifications and a piece of legislation taking into consideration the last updates on, on this market. Uh, for sure, there are a lot of things to be discussed, and uh, I would uh, see the benefit of this only, let's say, uh, somehow uh, a similar approach in all the countries will uh, will be will be used. Because if we will have a directive, but afterwards each and every uh, individual country will have his, let's say different way of implementation in the local legislation, it will not bring too much benefit. Okay, so cl as clear as possible. Still, mm -hmm. when, when you think will that be? How long will it take until we have all well, those clarifications? I have, I mean, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay, sorry. The, the beauty of the uh, directives as I see them is that they are not very specific and uh, they set a minimum standard of, of understanding and they let at the appreciation and that the transposing uh, into national law and they are pretty unclear specifically in order to allow each and every country to adapt it to his own particularities. You sound like a German now. Uh, <laughs> I, I like the preamble of directives. I like the explanations there, yes. sometimes which are lost on yes. their way, which are not found in the articles and the real wording of, of the, but the, the, the real thoughts behind the, the reasoning why they changed is very interesting to, to read in this, uh, this preamble. Uh, I would advise everyone to, to take his time and then you will see if you, if you really are interested in, in solving uh, different matters to see how fine the differences are if you look into different languages it was translated in. Sometimes we do this exercise in working groups yeah. in the Council of Bureau and we have different understandings, although we consider ourselves a little bit more experienced than, than other people. We are coming there with, with a good will, will in order to understand each other and to find the best solutions. But then to bring it up to, to a point and not to prolong too much my speech, I would bring again the example which was bothering us all, and I know Marius is a great fan of this, uh, as president of Council of Bureau, he was tackling uh, always the stupidity of some provision as those regarding uh, with dispatched vehicles. 
it's not even yet correct again this proposal we have to tackle it on, 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 on the level of discussions and each one. So I will think that things will stay like this. And we will have to really uh, bring our best minds and experience in order to transpose it in, in a good way in, in each country. I think what we've seen with Karl van Huller, he mentioned that it's an illness of requesting for rules, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that we're, you know, we are always fighting the rules because they're maybe too tight, yeah. but on the other side, we're requesting rule, 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 and maybe this illness has also come into there. Okay, Marius? In my opinion, this, uh, this proposal is not rough enough to be accepted. And uh, the example um, you used that's with dispatch, dispatch vehicles, this is very specific. The idea originally was not bad, but the formulation in, in, in the fifth directive was totally wrong. And now, what they want, uh, the way they want to correct, is even worse. They will be more complicated for the users, and it should help them. So uh, we see that uh, the formulation. This is a key point, not the idea behind, but the idea is beautiful. Nobody protests. Uh, against the ideas that the, the the problem is how we will execute any provisions and if we have the so-called so open clauses or not uh, clear clauses in a, in a, a directive mm -hmm. yes that's when we will implement uh, on a national basis we will have again big differences so hopefully the uh, know-how and the expertise of Council of Europe flows into the final formulation. Alejandro, you have the last word. Well, uh, first of all, I think that the MID review is completely needed. So it's fruitful and useful, especially because we have to include uh, insolvency cases and uh, we should uh, tackle the scope of the motor vehicle uh, insurance as well. Secondly, uh, it should be focused on two, three, four, five items, not more. Uh, so I think that the scope of the European Commission was right, except for one case. It's the Article 10 related to insurance insolvencies. They aimed at what I explained as the main principles, and the wording was totally confusing and even opposite to the main uh, aims. Okay. It is unbelievable. But fortunately, the European Parliament has amended uh, that uh, wording, and uh, I would say that uh, the European Parliament has done a good work as insolvencies is, uh, concerned, are concerned, but has done a very bad work because uh, the European Parliament has introduced more and more items. Uh, they are really... Uh, written in a very confusing way and uh, to sum up the european parliament uh, has uh, complicated uh, everything so i am a bit skeptical i am a bit so when, when you have a lot the most experience you two guys when do you think we have the directive well uh, next century perhaps uh, <laughs> uh, yes I, I foresee a very a very hard debate because we are not going to debate about four or five issues uh, we are going to be debate about everything, everything. And what is more, my fear, and I think I am not very wrong, is that uh, the main topic, the main need for the victims, that is how to tackle insolvencies, is going to be outside of the scope of this uh, yes. evaluation yes. procedure. I agree yes. with you. Yes, so I think this oh, is you, going you, to be... You stopped really this, this panel with a very negative message, but I agree it is. I have been following the discussions and uh, uh, I, I fear that I am not pessimistic. I am realistic. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, thank you the audience also that you stuck out. Uh, I know we are half an hour over time, uh, but I think the topic is very, very important. It will really shape a lot, especially the bankruptcy, whatever will happen with it. Uh, bankruptcy topic because I mean you ha you had it here and it's a fat tail as you say so the insolvencies of Astra and Carpartico alone will stay with you for a couple of decades yet in for some of the cases thank you very much mm -hmm.